Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And today I'm going to be doing a review and flip through of Rod and Staff Arithmetic 1. Okay, so first I also want to explain that in addition to doing a review and flip through of Rod and Staff Arithmetic 1, I'm also going to be comparing Rod and Staff Arithmetic to Math Lessons for Living Education Level 1 and 2, which is what my daughter was in prior to this. Um, so my daughter has special needs and she is behind in language arts and math and I was trying to find a way to start allowing her to catch up and be able to really retain some information and move on with her math lessons and um, for a while math lessons for living education was really working well for her and I think the reason why is the Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 1 is so, so basic. I think a lot of people use it even for kindergarten math um, rather than first grade. So it really only gets into a su subtraction and addition of just one number of just like single, you know, like ones, not tens or whatever, um, double digit numbers. Um, and it also covers shapes and a little bit of telling time. Um, and there wasn't a lot of money in there. Maybe it touched on a little bit. Um, so Sophie finished Math Lessons for Living Education Level 1 last year, and she did really well with it. She moved through it really quickly. She found it fairly easy. And then we moved into Math Lessons for Living Education Level 2 this year, and she made it through, she made it through Lesson 7, which would have been like the first seven weeks of school. And then, um, the biggest problem that we had with Math Lessons for Living Education was that it didn't really it didn't really emphasize memorizing math facts. So addition and subtraction math facts. It really emphasized using manipulatives, use them as long as you need to, and that sort of thing. Um, place value was highly emphasized, and I think that's a good thing. But it moved her really quickly, really in lesson eight, they moved to double digit plus single digit addition. And because of the fact that Sophie had not memorized her math facts because there really just wasn't very much emphasis on that in Math Lessons for Living Education Level One, she just found herself just really unable to do it, um, just unable to understand it. And I felt like Sophie just needed more number sense before being able to move on to that level. So, we put this on pause and decided to try to find something else. And in my research, I found Rod and Staff Arithmetic. Now, um, I believe Rod and Staff only goes to about eighth grade. I want to show you what's included in Rod and Staff Arithmetic 1 and also how it is similar and also how it's different from Math Lessons for Living Education. So first of all, Rod and Staff Arithmetic 1 comes with a teacher's manual, which is honestly very big. Um, about half the book, a little bit more than half the book, is actual lessons, and then the other part is um, answer keys. So this is your um, teacher book. Um, I found this very easy to use. I'll um, give you a flip through of this in just a few minutes and show you how you use it. And then in addition to that, there are two workbooks that are about this thick. So this is the first workbook. And then um, it goes from lessons one through 85, and then workbook two goes from lesson 86 to 170. So Math Lessons for Living Education, I believe has 180, um, has 180 days of math, where this has 170 days of math if you do one lesson a day. In addition to that, you can also get the drills. This is optional, um, but I found this very effective. And so these are the um, beginning arithmetic, arithmetic one speed drill. And you don't do one of these every day, but it will tell you the day that you do it. And um, you flip it over on the back and it has the drill. And I'll do a good flip through this in a minute. And then the ones that you miss, you can practice writing right here. So Sophie's actually enjoyed this. I'm very surprised by that. Um, but I'll, I'll explain to you how we use these in a minute. We do use them a little bit differently than intended. And then in addition to that, you also can get some extra um, practice sheets. And um, we actually, the, the practice sheets are numerous. Um, we actually have them in a, 
I think this is a one and a half inch binder. We've already used a lot of the practice sheets. We do not use all of these. Um, I only use the ones that I feel like are necessary for Sophie. But the cool thing is, is you have extra work here if you want to do it. And some of them are just fun and Sophie likes to do them like they're dot to dot and things like that. She likes to do and then color. So um, what I wanted to do first is just kind of talk about the differences between Rod and Staff and Math Lessons for a Living Education. Um, just because I know um, a lot of y'all on our, that follow our channel have been asking for a flip through and review of this. And I know a lot of you also use Math Lessons for a Living Education. Um, I have used numerous elementary level math programs and I would say that um, for my daughter Sophie, who does have special needs and struggles in this area, this is by far the best one that I have seen. Um, I do think this could potentially be a little bit of kill and drill for some students. So as, you, as we do the walkthrough, you'll be able to tell if you think that that's the case. Um, in my opinion, this math, this um, arithmetic one is more of a hybrid of like a first grade and second grade math than just a first grade math. It goes way beyond what Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 1 covers in their um, math book um, as far as, you know, other topics. Um, they do get into double digit addition and subtraction in first grade math. Um, they do not do carrying and borrowing or... Um, um, regrouping if you want to call it that they don't get to that level of double digit subtraction and addition but um, they do double digit without regrouping um, so they also do temperature fractions um, they do touch on shapes but I think it's mostly assumed that you already know that um, and they do numbers writing numbers up to 100 and number recognition at least to 200 um, and where Math Lessons for Living Education Level 1 only goes to 100. So in my opinion, this goes much further. It's more like a cross between a first grade and second grade curriculum if you're comparing it to Math Lessons for Living Education or maybe more to an ABECA or a just a stronger math program um, that goes further in math than like a Math Lessons for Living Education. Um, so it's kind of hard to know, in, in my experience, math programs are so different in what they cover. Um, some people will describe Math Lessons for Living Education as being a grade level behind. Some people take exception to that and say, no, that's not the case. Um, so I don't really know how to you know, frame this other than to say that this is kind of like doing um, all of Math Lessons for Living Education Level 1 and then a good bit of the Level 2 as well. Um, so it definitely goes further, but it also goes deeper in what it covers and the how and why and what you're doing. And it also goes in much greater detail in practice. So let me go ahead and give you a flip through of the books and um, then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So there are two workbooks that the student uses. This is basically the student book. Um, and so in the workbook, it, what you have is just the daily lessons. Um, so I'll start you out with the first lesson, which was very, very basic. It introduces the number zero. It has them copy the zero, and it has them identify um, zero items and one item. So it's very big on doing these little dot things for number recognition, um, subitizing. That was something that Sophie struggled with. She found this super easy, but as we went on, it, it definitely got harder. So then they move into introducing the number one, then two, then three. And then we got to four and they start also adding in what comes after, so after numbers, which for um, a child like Sophie, this was super helpful. This was something that she found particularly hard. I'm not really sure why, but for her that was pretty hard. Um, so this was very helpful for her. So we kept going on like this and then they added a section on you know, we're still doing the subitizing, we're still doing the um, write the number and then, you know, put your let your numbers in order. So writing the numbers one through six, but then they add a section on which one is more. Circle the one that's more. Sophie also finds that challenging. So this was really good for her also. They continue this for a while and then they start adding in a section 
with what comes in the middle. So if he finds this pretty easy, but um, just kind of filling in the blank, what number is missing? And all of the lessons kind of teach this, and then they're doing it so it's um, pretty easy. Then they start introducing, you know, money. Um, in lesson 11, they introduce addition, and they do it by fact families. So this is the one family and they have them memorize it so they, they they copy it and they trace it and then they fill in the blanks here and then in the next lesson they're they're um, doing some more with it and then they introduce the two family and um so i'm gonna flip you over a little bit further to show you when we get into more okay so now we're in lesson 17 and they're actually doing practice math facts. Um, so this just looks like regular addition here. I'll flip you over to closer to where she is now. Now, so, all right, so this is lesson 42. They're adding in pennies and counting pennies and writing the cent sign. They're still doing what is more and sometimes this will be what is less. And then over here, she's doing the six family um, and I usually write this for her. I have her tell me what to put in this and write it for her because there is a lot of writing and she does have a disability with writing. Um, so I have to kind of limit the writing that we do just so that I would rather her have her write these math problems here than, than filling in that. But she has really retained this. So at this point, she knows her math facts up to a sum of seven and she's really retaining it. So it's been going very, very well for her. So every day we have something like this. And then, um, so here's another page. All right, so then um, here we're introducing the sevens. And then what number comes before and what number comes after. So the numbers are getting bigger. I'm going to show you towards the end of this book, and then I will take you to the second book. All right, so by the end of this book, we're now doing subtraction, and this is the subtraction family five, and we're also counting by fives. We're also telling time. This is 85 is where this one ends, and we're doing math facts, and we're doing word problems, and down here, we're doing fractions. So Sophie hasn't gotten to that point yet. And then there is a second workbook that goes, that starts at lesson 86 and goes through 170. So we're doing word numbers, we're continuing addition practice, we're doing fractions, we're doing money. So how much is five nickels? How much is eight nickels? So this is way beyond what was done in math lessons for living education level one, way beyond um, as far as that. Um, and I'll take you to the end of this book we're even doing like units of measure, what's more, a quarter, a pint, a pint or a cup, a pint or a quart. Um, we're doing double digit subtraction and addition, what's more with numbers over 200. Still doing fractions, we're practicing adding three numbers, that's way beyond. She never even got to adding three numbers in Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 2 where we were before she went to addition of um, of two numbers plus one number. So here's more place value. So this is an idea of what rod and staff math looks like. I also want to show you the teacher book. I'm going to turn to lesson 42 since I showed you that page in the workbook. All right, so it tells you the objectives were going to be um, addition facts, the penny, and also number order. So this top part here shows you all the answers for the student workbook and tells you the materials you need. I don't follow this exactly as it is, so it, it acts like you're in a classroom. So it reminds me a lot of a Becca in that way in that it's really made for classroom use, but it's easily adaptable to the homeschool. Um, so it says you're going to review addition fact family six. So it says, when I call your fact, come up and stand in a line. So what I do is I orally review this with Sophie. Um, and then we'll, we'll um, drill through all of her fact families. 
We talk about the penny. We introduce the penny. I'll use real pennies for this. Talk about number order. We do drill, speed drill number eight. Um, I've already taken that one out of here, but I'll show you. This is speed drill number 10. So that tells me it goes for less than 46. And you're supposed to give them one minute. Sophie's not able to write that quickly, so I don't worry about the time. I just tell her to do this. It usually takes her about two minutes to write it all out. And she moves from one to the next without any hesitation, so I know that she knows them. And then I go ahead and check it, and if she misses any, she writes it on this side. So that's how the drill works. She actually is really proud of the fact that she can do this, and she does not mind the drills. I even call them quizzes, and that doesn't bother her. So um, this is actually working out really well for her because it gives her a chance to see that she's really making progress. Okay, so it talks about doing the drill, assign lesson 42, so that means they're going to be doing the workbook pages. And I kind of give her directions, but I let her do this as independently as she can. Okay, there are forms that you can use. And um, so number recognition, um, it's referring us back to this lesson here. So what, what's going to happen is um, you're going to write this on a board or something and just get the child to recognize the number. Sometimes there's a drill where they practice numbers. Um, I mean, anyway, this is the way the, um, the teacher manual works. I'm also going to show you back in the back here. These are the practice sheet answer keys. And so they've got four for each page. And so those are extra sheets that you can get if you want to. Um, some of these are specifically mentioned to be used, but you could easily skip them if you felt like you had enough practice without it. We do not use all of them, but I'm going to show you what those look like. All right, so this lists them all out. So for example, if you're on lesson 42 and your child is not doing well with memorizing their math facts, you could assign this page. If your child is struggling with what is more or what is less, you could assign this and get them to do a whole page of what's less. Um, if your child is struggling to pick a penny out, you could, um, you could have them just color the pennies on this page or if you just wanted more practice. And then if you're looking at um, what comes next as far as numbers, you can do these dot to dots. Now, Sophie doesn't struggle with these, but every time she sees one, she wants to do it because she thinks it's fun, and then she gets to color it. So we've been doing most of those. This is practicing the fact families, and um, we do these together because of the excessive amount of handwriting, but she's done really well with those. And she also sees the pattern, and I think that's really important to do that. Um, and then these are drills. Um, so what they do here is you, this will be referred to in the teacher's manual. Manual. So you might say, uh, go to the line that has a penny and in the first box, write the number 25. And so you're just seeing if the child can recall from memory what 25 looks like and then they'll just write all these. So um, here is just going to be calling out numbers and the child writing the numbers. So we have been doing that. So all of these are just different practice sheets that are based on the lesson that you're in. Um, so here you see they're doing the um, facts, you know, horizontally instead of vertically. Um, here is practice counting by tens. So when a new concept is introduced, then they can have a practice sheet to do that. So I would say that a typical lesson probably takes us about 30 minutes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the lesson with Sophie in the teacher's manual. And then after that, I will um, we'll do the drill if it calls for a drill, or we might do one of the sheets if it calls for that, particularly the ones where it's directing her to write down specific numbers. So I definitely want to make sure that she has that down as just a basic skill. And then I will have her do the lesson, which is a two-page lesson. Every lesson has two pages. We'll have her do this in her book. And it's been taking us about 30 minutes to do a math lesson. And we also will add in some review that's not necessarily in the teacher's manual. Usually I will just have her review all of her math facts at the beginning of the lesson, just like extra practice. We aren't using um, flashcards. We've just been using those fact family house drawings that they have, and that's been working really well. And, you know, she's not necessarily just got them memorized in order because whenever she does these drills and things where they're out of order, she still knows them. So I know that that's working. Um, 
So it is very different than math lessons for a living education. I feel like it's got a lot more structure. I feel like it's got a lot more drill and practice. Um, the lessons definitely take longer with math lessons for a living education. We probably would be done in at least 15 minutes. Um, never longer than that. And with these lessons, it takes us at least 30 minutes. If they're, if we're adding these extra pages to it or we're doing drills, it probably takes a little bit more like 45 minutes. So it's a more substantial lesson in my opinion. Um, and it's just working really great for Sophie. So I'm, I'm really, really glad that um, we found this to use for her. If you have any specific questions about um, Rod and Staff Arithmetic 1 or how it compares to Math Lessons for a Living Education or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to answer those questions for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.